Back in 1993, we undertook an experiment using some pilot markings. The TRL had expressed concern over the behavior of cyclists in such a setup. But as you can see, the cyclist here on the left that leaves the stop line carefully follows the guide marking right the way through the junction. And in fact, the drivers are generally following the markings through to their destination. In this experiment, traffic entering from the right was not given any guidance. And you'll see that they start straddling across the guide markings, switching lanes, and so on. Also note that at this stage we hadn't developed the concept of the thin track markings. So the point where the red escort just crossed looks like a give way marking because it's a conventionally thick white line road marking. Barry Crown from Staffordshire County Council was helpful in advising us on choosing the correct lane occupancy to ensure that we don't have queuing. You'll see at the other stop line, at the top right-hand corner, there's a long queue in a single lane and the other lane's running empty. Agreement was reached in principle to the scheme towards the end of 1995 and it was then time to hone the design into detail, ready to be um, implemented. We were given an indication that finance wouldn't be available until April of 1996, so in that period, we had the detailed design on AutoCAD. Um, we had to get the safety audit undertaken with uh, the County Council, and we had to look at suitable contractors uh, for implementing the white lining. We had to design the signing and so on. The detailed design was completed um, in, in the office, and the safety audit was undertaken in about January of 1996 and everything was ready therefore to happen in the April. We undertook traffic counts and we measured queue lengths and delays through the junction and we worked closely with the Surrey County Council Signals Department. The scheme was innovative in, in several ways. It involved the spiral markings, which have, have been used elsewhere in the country for some period of time. However, we adapted it by adding what we call tracks. The tracks are new markings in that they are narrower, they are half the length, but twice the thickness of conventional road markings. And the tracks actually run from the stop line at the traffic signals leading you into the spirals to take you around the roundabout. So effectively, you enter in one lane, the correct lane for your destination, and the, the spirals and tracks lead you and deposit you on the exit to your destination. Also, in the week leading up to the uh, installation, the white lining company, Wilson & Scott, actually made um, templates in order that they could lay them on the road, quickly paint, because we had obviously limited time. The junction being so busy, we had to do the work in, in the night, and it was done over a weekend. It was done on the Friday night and Saturday night, finishing at about four or five in the morning on the Sunday morning. The vast areas of tarmac that had no markings on them at all we transformed into uh, what looked in plan like a scatter of little markings. But when you drive the junction, the markings that you're crossing do not become confusing because they are very small in, um, in width. The extra thickness was used because it's a completely new product which in fact only received its patent in the week that we uh, implemented the scheme. Wilson and Scott have developed a scheme called uh, Plastiflex, which are twice the thickness of normal road markings, which has the advantage that the traffic polishes it and keeps it bright during the day. Um, but when, the, when it rains, the line sits above the average uh, water on the surface, and so it's still very clear, even in dark and dismal conditions. We felt this was necessary 
to ensure that drivers did follow the tracks and that in poor conditions, when it's especially important, uh, they could still be seen. The road signs were installed in the week prior to the road markings and then bagged over and they could then be removed as soon as a particular approach had been marked out. So coming from the M3, wanting to go, say, to Camberley, uh, you would take the outside lane, you'd read the sign, you'd, you'd know you were in the outside lane, you wouldn't even need to know it was a roundabout. As you go across the stop line at the traffic signals, you'll see the track gradually spinning away from the island and taking you out across to the near side two lanes to eventually carry on round and go up the A30 dual carriageway. So in order to determine whether the scheme has been successful or not, we actually ran some articles in the local press inviting people to comment. Somebody actually wrote in and said, shouldn't you be asking people like the AA and the police and sh you know, surely you're the professional engineers? But we did ask the public for their views as they are users of the idea. And we drew a lot of congratulations from people and generally it's been very successful. We did look at the possibility of um, painting one of the lanes to guide people, give them better guidance towards the superstores, but in the event we haven't done that and, and I don't think it's necessary, uh, but it's something that we could have done and could be used elsewhere. Meridian Television were asked if they were interested and they wanted to come along but unfortunately they wanted to come along on the very first morning of operation and turned up when I was on site at about seven o'clock in the morning to observe. Obviously on the first day you might get one or two mishaps and people learning the scheme but nevertheless this is what they did. An experimental traffic system has been launched to improve safety at one of Surrey's worst accident black spots. Engineers hope the new system at the Meadows Roundabout in Camberley will save money and lives. Julie Newing has this report. The engineers have tackled the problem by painting new road markings, which encourage drivers to stay in lane from the time they approach the roundabout to the time they leave it. So far it seems to have worked with some exceptions. It would probably work better because I had an accident back there um, beginning of March. So I wasn't very pleased with it then. But I hope it'll improve. I'm not sure I went in the right lane, but um, I'll try again tomorrow. Right? <laughs> Get it right eventually. The schemes cost £35,000, but with accidents costing £55,000, the council hopes it'll get its money back sooner rather than later. Julie Newing on the Meadows Roundabout in Camberley for Meridian News. Overall, the scheme has been completely successful. The main objective was to solve accidents. We've gone from 10 to 12 per annum down to 1 to 3. And in fact, the th I include three, but in fact, two of them were on the periphery of the junction and not really related to the scheme as such. The other interesting uh, side issue is that queues have diminished and the signals people tell us that the signals are operating far more efficiently because people are using all of the lanes where previously they may have concentrated on one or two of them. So we think it's uh, very successful. It cost about £35,000, so in benefit cost terms it's, it's excellent returns we've achieved here.